Welcome back to my garage. Please excuse the noise. I'm running the heater to heat up my compressor so that I can use the mill and make the last part for this intake valve, which is the slide. This turned out to be quite the adventure. As strange as it may seem, I really enjoy fixing all the all the bugs and things that's wrong with my mill. It's, I really enjoy having problems that I can solve <laughs> in a strange way. On with the show. So this is the part modeled in Fusion. Now bear with me, this is my first ever voiceover, so uh, I'm not quite sure how well it will go. But anyways, this is the intake valve, the secondary intake valve for my uh, home-built engine, the most powerful two-stroke ever. And it's not meant to be a throttle valve, it's, uh, it's an open or closed valve. Because that, that intake is uh, it's valveless, it's meant to be run wide open. No valve at all. So that's the crankcase and it's and how it's how it will be mounted to the crankcase. So I'm marking up some uh, stock here, roughly marking up some stock. It's uh, 10 millimeter by 150 millimeter aluminium plate. And I'm cutting it to size with a normal like wood wood chopping saw. And it works just awesome. It's uh, much faster than using an angle grinder or a, or a bandsaw. Just and it doesn't heat up the metal at all. So yeah, carbide tip wood saw. This is the cheapest one I could find and works just great. Deburring. And I will soon realize that I cut this piece of stock far too big and do another cut on it to, to reduce the size. And it's still far too big. I had to do a lot of side milling to get it to, to the right size. So here I'm facing off one side and uh, I'm using a really small end mill and that's because I've run out of C height, Z height and uh, and that's the only mill I could fit over the part there. I couldn't fit the larger end because they're longer. Side milling, and now I'm using a, a bigger end because now it fits, obviously. I had quite a bit to take off here, much more than I really needed. So, um, yeah, it's a learning process. So I'm facing it off with my... Um, with my uh, face mill, 50 millimeter face mill, and um, the inserts are not meant for aluminium, they're too dull, so it doesn't really work that well. And here I'm slotting that uh, slot for the where I can control the valve, and I'm taking it really easy here because uh, slotting is uh, it scares me because the whole cutter is engaged like 180 degrees of the cutter is engaged, and it's scary. So this is just an uh, adaptive clearing tool path for uh, for that hole, and adaptive clearing that that's my favorite because it it's so easy to like dial in what you want. Tool changer working. Took me quite some time to get that working properly. And here I'm uh, spot drilling the the holes. So this is actually my, I think it's my second time using a spot drill and this is my first time ever using a drill in a mill. And as you can hear and see, I'm taking it real slow, too slow and it's, I'm like, I, I don't, I have no clue how much, like how fast I'm, I should go with a drill. It's easy by hand, but like when you have to program it, like no clue. So I know I could have like gone much faster than this. Okay, I'm ready to flip the part. In retrospect, I should have done the whole cutting out the contour in the first setup and then not in the last, because now it will be slightly skewed. Not really noticeable, but I know it's there. Cutting out some pockets just to lighten up the part. Adaptive clearing, my favorite. And this is the whole depth in uh, like one pass, whole depth and uh, one millimeter. Uh, um, from the side, <laughs> slotting out the, the shape, and uh, it went really well actually. Like first first time, it really went 
All right, second time it went well <laughs> in this mill. So another facing operation with that uh, face mill, and uh, and there my battery died, and my mill died too. Like the computer locked up, and I I spent a few days troubleshooting this, and I realized it was a RAM, uh, a bad RAM chip in there. So uh, replace that, and everything's fine now. I'm just cutting off the excess from that. Um, but, oh, sorry. I I've milled two pieces now because uh, I didn't realize the battery died, and so I've milled this and the other piece, the lid and the base of uh, of the. So I think this is the part you saw, and I've also milled uh, the other part. Here I'm chamfering to just. Uh, I'm going to uh, screw them together and uh, bolt them together, and I don't want the the burrs to interfere while doing that. I'm gonna finish them simultaneously while bolted together. I'm drilling out those um, five millimeter holes that will be tapped. I didn't bother with... Uh, I had a six millimeter drill in the mill, in the tool changer, and uh, I didn't bother with adding another drill there, because there's it's only a six tool, tool changer, and, uh, and I have to re-zero all the tools every time I change them out, so... That's why tapping. I know the light was bad there. So test fit here, and uh, everything seems to be lined up and fine. Now I'm sanding both part. <coughs> I'm sanding both parts together to get them to line up properly. It was probably. You know, a thou or half a thou of misalignment there because of my uh, because when I flipped the part, I have I'm not using that 3D tester or 3D probe thing for um, for searing. I'm using just a, a wrist pin. More deburring. Lots of deburring on those tiny slots there, and I really should have done those as a like I sh I did did them last, but I should have done a like a facing of that pocket, the floor of that pocket, like a last operation, because that would have removed a lot of those burrs. Yeah, it's fine. Now I'm sanding it to get a better finish. You might see that uh, 3D tester, 3D Pro in the, in the background there. And I tried to make a short tool holder for it. And here's at, uh, at my friend's garage in his lathe, because it didn't fit my lathe. But um, it turned out to be kind of off-center. And I tried 3D printing a short holder. and um, But that didn't work either, because it turned out to be too not stiff enough. Because there, there was some deflection in it, enough deflection to not be accurate for, for what I needed it to be. So uh, yeah, that's why I'm not using it because my my vice is too high. There I <laughs> try to show you that uh, there should, was supposed to be kind of a boss on the underside there, but I sorry, I that adaptive toolpath crashed into my vice and uh, I realized it too later. Sandblasting to see if that can remove some of those burrs, but not really too well. So had to do it manually with a little file and and a stone and yeah just just put in some elbow grease didn't take that long anyway this voiceover thing is kind of hard cuz i <laughs> things are surprising me here so I don't think the finish is that bad. I really like the contrast between the machined areas and the, the scotch brighted uh, surfaces there. So uh, yeah, and some sandblasting surface finish. So here's the blanking plate currently on the crankcase and I'm removing it and uh, removing some residue from the gasket there for a test fit. Would have been disastrous if it didn't fit but uh, it does.
it hasn't really dawned on me or haven't really dawned on me how how much of a difference this CNC machine will make like I've always wanted a CNC machine since I I think I since I was a little kid I've wanted a CNC mill and now I've got one and it's thanks to you guys it's thanks to you guys you guys watching and especially uh, thanks to my patrons for supporting me and everybody else for supporting me and donating and it really it's really made a big difference in my life so here you can see I'm probing with a with a one millimeter filler gauge and uh, and a wrist pin a 10 millimeter wrist pin so gives me an offset of uh, 12 millimeters in Mach 3 Mach 3 <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now you can see I'm facing with a, it's a 12 millimeter 4 foot end mill. And the reason I'm using 4 foot end mill is because, in mills, is because I bought a lot of them for cheap on uh, AliExpress. So, but this works much better than the, than that face mill. Spot drilling those holes in the, so this is the, the slide, spot drilling the holes in the slide. And using a pocket operation to do the, to do the shape and uh, I'm going kind of slow here because uh, pocket scares me like adaptive doesn't but pocket scares me because like uh, I'm in my experience it suddenly it will do a hole cutter like a sliding pass and it's kind of out of my control but it's just my inexperience that's that's the problem so I look at Mark 3 here finally working I've even updated to the latest version. Had some troubles with um, with feed hole, feed hole creeping, or like the, the tool changer would creep rotate when feed hole was uh, feed hole was um, engaged or pressed. So here I'm doing the hole, the intake hole in that uh, slide, and I'm starting on the like contouring out the shape so here you can see I'm doing that contour the shape in the first operation and then flipping it so I forgot to set my depth a millimeter lower than the stock and uh, and also that weird thing there I think that's because there's a slight radius to my tool and it didn't cut it clean off Zeroing on the on the parallels, so my zero, my Z zero is on the bottom of the part because that's the machine machine surface and so most accurate. And I also flipped it so that I'm I'm now zeroing on the on the same machine surface as I did in the first operation. Facing with that 12 millimeter end mill. This is not real time by the way, but I think actually I could probably run it close to as fast as this and so I'm just being conservative now in the beginning. So that turned out just perfectly, just as it was supposed to be. Supposed to turn out. By the way, I'm I'm recording this in my uh, in the garage because that's the most quiet area uh, area like in the house there's the that air condition and the fireplace and and everybody in there so and it's cold here because i can't run the heater so really cold <laughs> if you were wondering so here i'm ripping off that weird uh, like big burr and it's it's not really attached it's just hanging on there by a like a really thin thin hold more deburring I've rubbed that file with uh, with chalk by the way and that really helps to keep keep the aluminium from clogging it Test fit. And uh, it fits surprisingly well.
perfect, I would say. Well, not perfect, there's a slight problem here, and um, you'll see soon. That slot there, it, it won't open fully. So that's the problem with my design, what I did in Fusion. I, I think I made the, like the chamfers on that, uh, on the fillets, on that little bus there, I made those too, too small. So I'm just filing it to size here. And, uh, and uh, now it should work perfectly, perfectly, and it does. Yeah. So guess the tune and leave a comment. So that's it for now. The valve is done. I um, I need to make that that attachment for the velocity stack. But um, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.